bed. I mean, like, it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Is that the dog? <laughs> you just swallow the cell phone. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome you to the July 21st. 2015 Village Renewal Policy Planning Board meeting. It's 7.06 p.m. My name is Maurice Whiteman. I'm the chair of the planning board, and I'm calling the meeting to order. Uh, other members of the planning board here this evening are Rich Steffens without his hat, Mike Zerler, and John Litton. Liz Harshow is excused this evening. Uh, usually, uh, our attorney is George Rodenhaus, and our secretary is Ryan Burney. Welcome, Ryan. Welcome, Ryan. Welcome, Ryan. It's bigger than unanimous. We have uh, our planner, Dave Gilmore, out there among the common folk. And uh, our, our village board liaison, Tom Rocco, is not here this evening. Also, we have our new building inspector, uh, Bryant Arms, here to keep us honest. Thank you very much. The agenda this evening is brief, but sweet. We have um, one application review for completeness, and that's for our number PB1501. And it's a site plan application to divide a retail space at 71 Main Street into two retail spaces. Mr. Goldman. Yes. Is here. Come on up. Okay. Thank you. So you've been here once, and I think uh, Rich Miller was here. A yes, of right. Times. He's uh, represented me the last meeting. We met with the Zoning Board of Appeals, also my wife and I. Right. And, uh, we'd like to you know, move ahead. With, I actually have got tenants for the space. I put up some, you know, rented signs. And right. A lot of a lot of activity. So Good. okay. So this evening. Um, George, you have some notes right. about the application? Could you explain right. that? Well, my notes were very similar to, uh, Gil to Dave Gilmore's notes. And so uh, to, to sort of combine them, uh, on the parking issue, and by the way, I think we're dealing now with the plan is last dated June 21. Uh, which is the plan for a single entrance single door, right. from the street, right. which has a vestibule inside for the two right. stores. Uh, and that's to comply with the zoning board getting back to us and saying that it had to be a single entrance from the street. And the parking issue, my conclusion was that, that uh, because this has continued to be a retail space, although it's two stores, it's the same exterior dimensions, and therefore the the required parking hasn't changed from the current use to what is now being proposed. Uh, the board could either say that's, in other words, no, no, no increased demand for parking, uh, or it could say it's a new arrangement and wants to see a demonstrated parking plan. Uh, my sense is that since there's no increase in retail space, there's no change and no need to look at parking as an issue. Uh, on the sign restrictions, I think I had the same recommendation that Dave Gilmore had, which is that there is a 30 square foot limit on the, on the total right. the signage total array. Right. Uh, and even though each one may be individually in compliance, uh, we need to know the total square footage of signage altogether, two awnings and some of them. Uh, and that wasn't on the plan. So it's a, I think it's a recommendation to add that to the final plan. Yeah, I thought right. Rich Miller sent something like that to me, but I okay, he'll be back, it. I think, Friday. It should be on the plan. Right. Yeah. So that should be added to the plan. Uh, there's a, on the, And they, we also uh, recommended that, I think it's a good idea, it's in fact required that the 
that the uses be specified as retail uses. Right. Um, and since we have to know that they're permitted uses, that what they are be specified. If one's a jewelry shop, well, one's, one's a jeweler, tattoo. the other one is a computer. That should be specified in the plan so oh, okay. it's so you want clear that that. The other one is what? A computer repair store. Or, oh, you know, he sells to use computers. Yeah, Not tattoos. Apple, don't worry. <laughs> Not Apple. Not Apple. Okay, so whatever it is, <laughs> it's most likely permitted as a retail or professional service or retail service use. Right. But we just need to know that. Okay, so put that plan. on. Okay. So they were the the only two things to add to the plan that were, I think, the uh, total square footage of the signage. Right. And uh, and also, I don't think it's on there that the actual height of the letters of the of the letters on each sign oh, okay because there's some if you just go by the restrictions that are in the code and and they all are in you can get that from the building department okay. yeah. Yeah. So this, is, this would five. really be for like the tenants when they make yeah. if, I if they make their them. own signs then they have to get a sign permit from the from the building department okay Right. And that'll be clearly explained to them. Right. That. So but as far as us approving the plan, so oh, I see on the plan itself. We just need to know the square footage is okay, there. All right. And My they can get the letter layout and so on. The square notes, footage so. of the signs. I'll, I'll relay this to Richard, I guess. Right. right. Back yeah. Yeah. And that that was really all I had. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add? Well, I think I heard Mr. Golden say that the two uses are now, the two proposed uses are now known. Right. One would be the uh, computer store. One would be the computer store on the right, and on the left is a jeweler from, you know, he's moving from, uh, he's in the village already. So that's just new information for me. I think Mr. Rogenhausen has spoken to that. If you, I don't think I have anything in particular to add. Um, regarding this option one plan, which is the plan before us, um, other than that. Uh, and we're looking at A1.0, correct? A1.1. A1.1. A1. This existing. A1. Okay, sorry. A1 is option one. So we we'll look at the plan. And as people say, it's June 21st. And we chose a single door. Um, I might reiterate also. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We chose a single door. Single door. And that was that Predict. you, I don't think Pavoid is strong. I don't see a single door. Single door here. Okay, the door is the single door in the middle of the, uh, let's say, here. It's uh, building that accesses the two compartments that are being developed in right the here. first floor. Off the okay, that's yes. right. right. Okay. Our architect, Richard, yeah. uh, originally had discussed, you know, putting, leaving the one door there, and then he was coming up with other ideas yeah. and wanted to think, you know, it was better, so he pr presented a two-door option. Right. But, but, but CBA didn't want that. We're back so, to yeah, one right. So we're, I'm happy, uh, Okay. for me, whatever you guys want. Okay. Um, Anything so else? If okay. you get this as complete tonight, I had... I think there was my recommendation that there's a um, the variance notation be added on the plan. That's that right. seems like something that can be done. And then just and that's the recently awarded variance. And then um, it was just my recommendation that this is not listed action for speaker. All right. Okay. Can you just repeat? I missed one. I have awnings need to be added. Um, sign no footage. Warnings. No, if they do warnings, right? They do warnings. Isn't that the first? But the sign on the awning should be added. So lettering. There's no warning now. Lettering. The calculation. Are you not adding an awning? It's the so really if they want warnings, the yeah. The old it's tenant, tenant took the lettering. So it's the lettering the on the awning. Right. There was an old falling down awning anyhow. It was there, so. Okay. The square footage of the signs and need to be added. Variance notion added and there was one other thing. Yes, and the uh, retail uses have to be oh, specified. Oh, right. Two main on the right. right. Now, I'm, I'm confused about the uh, sign. I thought there was a sign on the building itself. Right? There's currently a sign that is up above the... Um, there's a sign pole 
that's up above the first floor and second floor, if we're to call it, I don't know, partition. Right. Right. And, like a flagpole. and that um, comes out, as Mr. Goldman said, vertically from the building. But I, I believe what's proposed is a reorganization of the signage. Um, I, I've seen a couple I, of versions of it, and I'm confused what's being proposed. And here. essentially, the, uh, what I understand is it's the individual business identification signs. Um, on, on this drawing, it looks like it's only on the awning. And, and, and there isn't a, a separate sign. And what we've got is some of the information go, may go across on the other plan as well. That's too bad. The other sheet. So that, that, that has to be uh, made whole. On this plan, that is A1.1, which is the option that you're presenting and that we will determine its completeness up for it this evening. Um, we have to know what the signage for the building is going to be. And on, on the drawing, it looks like it's just on the awning. Well, although the right, so he has to make another drawing without an awning because there's no awning there. Well, he may be proposing an awning. That's what it looks like. He's got an awning on here. Yeah. There's this sign here, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> okay. Which is, as I said, identifies the individual. So you want that or you don't want that? It's allowed. You, you have it is allowed, so once, fine. Once right we're now a foot sign for each business, which is really pretty small. Okay. Uh, but that's... How far out down. is it allowed to come? I'd almost rather not talk about it now and have that be something that you check with the building department. Or great, great. So that doesn't have to be on A1. Right, but we have to know what you're proposing for the signs. Right now there's an awning and there's a separate um, sign extending extend, extend from the building. So if, if that's what you want, then that's fine. Then this is good the way it is, great. I think. Um, now the lettering that's on this up awning drawing is, is not good enough for you? I just don't know what the height of the letters is. There's a limit on the height. George, the, the signage it's part of the awning is here. It'd be like measuring the rectangle. It says eight inch letters. around the letters, not the size of the letters, right? Yeah, this, this the size of the letters. Is what it says. Eight yeah. inch letters at the top, max. So the band is seven inches. So it would be seven inches or less. Okay, I think seven inches is the limit, if I recall. Yeah, seven inches. I think that just pushed the intention. the wall sign, because that's the only thing we have is a vertical right. sign. So does this have to be changed to seven inches, or that's... No, they... This is Well, right. you can't get seven inches in that. That's one square foot right. per sign. So that's something, I don't know what that is, four by eight inches. Right, he said to max, but yeah. So it'll be smaller. So, so less than seven inches is sense. what you're saying. He's got five, five one-foot square signs or small signs on the big sign. Five, I don't know why, there are only two uses. There's an upstairs. Maybe, Maybe he's including that. that has to do with the okay. upstairs. Would you prefer that. that it not include the upstairs? Well, if there's That's a sign. It's up to you. It's up to the yeah. board, really. I mean, just in terms right, of the signage is upstairs, and that might have something to do with and the upstairs are, office. And they are described on the existing sign. They're not now. I mean, now there's yeah. a couple of you know, like there's a yoga studio and uh, like you have an existing condition plan as part of the set. If you want. And I think that shows. Now, there's one What we're saying is that every commercial tenant is entitled to. A one square foot sign. Okay. So, right. Yeah, I think where you put it, the discussion right. between you and the planning board is okay. to where you put it. Uh, but you're entitled to it. Okay. So if the awning, and that's not included in the 30 square feet. Right. I that's see. that's in addition to the 30 square feet. But the awning counts. I count the awning as a sign. It's the only sign yes. here at this point. Right. Well, it isn't the only sign in here. There's that up there. Uh, well, this on the be, plan. In the 30 square feet, this would be included. That's extra, not part of the okay. 30 square feet. So that's not part of the 30 square yeah. feet. Yeah. Okay. I, I think you're well under. I'm, I'm guessing like this, is, if this is seven inches by 
square feet, something like that. Oh, so You're well, 130 probably. square feet. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but we just need to have it on the plan so we know that it's less than 30 square feet. The total. Yeah. Not, not so including total these. signage has to, not including that. You're talking about the owner. Has to well, be. Or, or whatever. If you, if you have a wall sign, you can have a wall sign or a window sign. You know, you can put a permanent sign in the window, in the window, but that counts okay. as a sign. Or a sign out from the so building. So the, the awning well. lettering square footage does not get added to the standalone sign? The, 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 uh, the one square foot per tenant yes. is guaranteed. That yes. There's no limit on that size other than one square foot per tenant. Right. So soon you're not going to have more than maybe four or five tenants. Right. Anything else in the building is a sign gets added up to 30 square feet or less. Okay. So the, I'm saying the signage on the front Including of the building. Including the awning. What, what if we don't have an awning? Then you but can do a different sign. You can put a sign on the building or put the sign on the windows. A lot of buildings on Main Street have large signs that extend out so you can see them. Well, that's a right. sign that right. extends out. Right, a hanging yeah. sign. If that's their preference, right. they can okay. So they I can do speak that. to the tenants. Yep. Nation and the building side. department. Well, you know, what I'd like to ask is, was I have uh, Hudson Valley contractors, you know, like going to be doing the work. Is there any way in the in the interim that we can do some interior work while all this gets That would be up to processed? the building department. Um, I know you've been able to do demolition until now. Yeah, we right? started certain, like, he got a permit for a certain kind of demolition, but I, you know, when I went into the store today, they, Bob Cohen told me to uh, ask if there's anything you know you can do to get you know to the next step. Right. Well, we don't grant building permits. That's done by the building department. And before you can get a building permit, I think we have to have an approved site plan application, and that's got a few more steps before that happens. We, tonight we're going to determine the completeness of this. If we say it's complete, then we will schedule a public hearing. Right. And we will send it to the county for their review. They will almost certainly say no impact, but we have to give them the option of saying what they want. Once we get um, public hearing done, well, once we get the county back, then we can have the public hearing. Okay. We'll schedule it in advance, assuming a, a positive. Right. Okay. Um, and, uh, and at the public hearing, assuming that there is nothing else missing or mm -hmm. that comes up as a problem, um, you can walk away with an approved site plan and then go downstairs to the building department the next day. Right. And well, what do you anticipate though? Because you know the tenants are asking, you know, when they can move in. So I told them, well, you know, I thought maybe well, you know, I was hoping I can tell you the, September first. The but, gating, you know, it sounds the gating item here, I think, will be the county. Right. Their next meeting is on Wednesday, August fifth, which is two weeks from today. Right. Um, they need everything in sometime at the beginning of next week. Okay. So if we can get it in this week, okay. which we should be able to do, assuming we determine it's complete, right. we can get it to them tomorrow or the next day, then they should be able to rule on it on August 5th. Okay, so if I get the information to my architect, then it's possible to be submitted to the county. By early next by week. Early oh, next I don't think you need that for the county. No. no. Stuff you can send this to the county. Yeah. Right. Now, there, there are things that we will have to determine it's complete subject to things being changed. I think it's complete. Uh, okay, but there isn't the ZPA notation. What we're talking about is really to be added to the final site plan. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying it's complete. But I mean, if yeah. the, the things we're talking about are easily added. Uh, there's no major defect in this, no major thing missing for that one. So this could be submitted? Yes, we think it will, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out in a little while. Okay, so, uh, any other points or questions? Sure. Just that there are some kids hanging out and we've had some of the oh, right. shops on the block calling us oh, right. to tell us you about it. Some, like, you know, is a loitering, you know, okay. Well, that's an, that's an item so for the police. Yeah, well, you should, if, you're, if you're telling us this to expedite things, we're no, going no, to session. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. This having isn't me. Loitering. I don't have these stores. It's right, other right. store owners. Right. right. But what so, I'm saying no, is, yeah, contact the police. That's the police, right. Okay. 
Any members have any questions or comments about the application? So we can rule this complete tonight. They can make the changes for the public That's hearing. That's what I said. Yep. Okay. I'm Mr. Zeller? No, I'm fine. I just Mr. wanted to say hello. hello. Okay. I think I agree with George. I think the way that tenants are constructed, there's no additional parking impact. Okay. Um, yes. Should, do, we couldn't have to vote on that, right, do we? On the no. parking? Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. So. Um, I have a motion to determine that this application is complete. So moved. Thank you. And uh, who, who made the motion? That's a good question. I'm, I'm going to go back to the John. video. <laughs> okay, John Litton moved. And who will second? I second. Thank you, Rich. And that's a, uh, is that a motion for completeness? Yes. Or a motion for completeness? Completeness. Completeness. With information. Completeness. Well, um, okay, so uh, now we need a motion to refer this to the county and schedule a public hearing. We want to vote on the And let me just see what we have. You got a second. No. We didn't vote. Oh, we didn't vote. We didn't vote. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, okay. <laughs> you just You're the only one left. We had a motion in the second. We didn't motion anything. All right. Any further discussion? No. You're talking among yourself. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Now we need a motion to refer this to the county. So moved. And schedule a uh, public hearing. And let me get the date. So the county will it's see this do on. Do I send out the letters for a public hearing? Or? You will speak I sent with. For the zoning board, I sent you, you, you will have to do this. You'll speak with Ryan, who right. will be in tomorrow, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'll give you the packet that you need okay. to. Oh, that. Probably in the clerk's office tomorrow, but if he stops downstairs, I can run it. Okay. Okay, so um, let's see, the next playable meeting. So we'll have to schedule the uh, a motion to refer this to the county and to schedule a public hearing for Tuesday, um, August 18th. So moved. Thank you, Rich. A uh, second? Second. Thank you, Mike. All in favor? Are you for discussion? Yes. Yeah. August 18th. I'm checking the date myself. August 18th. Okay. Are you not? That's right. Am I not right? Okay. Any further further discussion? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion Thank passes. you very much. Thanks. You're welcome. So uh, you'll speak with Ryan to get the package for the public notice that you'll have to do. Okay. And um, Ryan, you haven't done a county referral. Um, there are probably examples. There's probably a template on uh, Brogan's computer, which I think is really good. Brogan used to use your own That's sad. Personal one, so I was just trying to make do with the file base that I have from her. So I can figure that and see if I can find something. So she has files on her computer that are not on our computer? No, I should have access to all of them. Okay. Is this a list of all the tenants within so many feet? Well, you probably already have I that. I already have, yeah, made copies. Right, but um, we're talking about the referral to the county, okay. which you haven't had to do yet. We have to do that now for this application. So, uh, okay. so you just keep it at the same tomorrow. Okay. So Ryan, um, you, you I'll help him find the most county referral guy. Okay. Okay. Ryan. Thank you. Ryan, so I'll help you with the county uh, referral. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, we have some other business. Uh, added to this agenda, which isn't on here, is approval of the uh, draft minutes for the July 7, 2015 meeting. Um, <clears throat> Brian, did, did you get the marked up copy of this? I did, but it didn't get to read okay. it. So okay. I, okay. I, can, I can deal with that. 
Okay, so, Dave, would you like to give an update on the B3 zoning district project? Sure. I'm just trying to put away my one page here. Um, so, I did forward information to Ms. White for um, the next level. I went to the... I'm sorry, I, I was... I was talking about the B3. Oh, B3, I think. Yeah. You're welcome. B3 is next on the list. Um, okay, so the B3 committee has constituted and it has had six meetings to date. It has regular standing meetings on Mondays and Thursdays at 1 o'clock p.m., usually in this room. And um, the group has a small list of items that it wants to work on, including, uh, as identified by Mr. Zeeler originally, some of the inconsistencies within the code. One of the main items that the group has spent considerable time on is there is a, is a purpose statement at the beginning of the district regulations and zoning ordinance 2.12.13, sub-item G. And um, I'm trying to remember the last time I may have briefed this group. We've had participation at the meetings by, um, uh, variously by um, the Chairman Whiteman, um, Member Zeeler and Steffens, and also Ms. Harshow. Um, and so uh, in the local law, Number seven of 2013, which adopted the um, standards for the B, the, that changed the standards for the B3 district, uh, there was a statement of legislative intent. However, no such statement of legislative intent, or if we're to call it by analog purpose, made it into the um, code itself. And that can be very instructive to the user. And so this group has worked through a purpose, and the latest iteration of the purpose of the district was, they're calling it the Neighborhood Business Residential Zoning District, NBR Zoning District. And it go, the purpose is, as proposed to date, and this is from uh, yesterday, the NBR Zoning District Neighborhood Business Residential Mixed Use is established to promote the development of a neighborhood defined by a mix of residential, retail, service, professional, civic, and cultural uses, which encourages travel by walking, bicycle, and mass transit. Two goals for the district are encourage residential housing on the upper floors of multi-story mixed-use buildings and to foster a positive relationship between residential, retail, and service professional uses while encouraging mass transit and reducing automobile trips and overbuilding of parking facility. So um, that's what's before the group. There's been discussion of uh, working next on standards in 2.12.13.G.1.A.1.2.3, which were some of the um, construed as conflicting standards in terms of was it multi-story or did you allow single story, for example? And then I think there's also been discussion of the group about going through the code, um, also to some extent line by line. And there's, during the process of this uh, group meeting, there have been uh, discussions also about uh, use matrices, is how I would present it. And there has been discussion about um, allowed uses. And the way that allowed versus prohibited uses and including the allowed uses, the tiers of uses between allowed versus special use permit. There's been discussion about how that may be presented. That's my summary of where we're at within the um, project and process today. Thanks. Anything to add, Michael? Sounds good. Okay, great, thank you very much. <clears throat> Are you ready for your next report on the other zoning changes? Do you have anything else? Is that really it? Sure. No, I'm sure. I'm, I guess I'm ready. Um, so um, I did go to the 
zoning board on Ms. White's um, project. And I think that uh, the zoning board's main discussion point was a need for specific standards for um, uh, registration and requirements for non-resident owner um, offices and, well, and a non-resident owner manager of multifamily um, housing type, type of shelter. And so I did pass that on to Ms. White. I actually um, gave Ms. White recommendations for um, advancing the product. And that was in the context of limited hours remaining within the original task budget for the consultant. I do want to point out that, and I sent those comments off to Ms. White at the end of last week. Mr. Zeeler also had comments. I don't think that he said it at this group, but he informed me that he had commentary at um, probably one of the B3 meetings, and I didn't get to send those to Ms. White today but I will send those along as well. And I can share them with your group just so that you're exposed to Mr. Zeeler's comments as well. Thanks. And that's, that's that project, uh, where we're at. Now um, Ms. White will uh, comment and turn that around. Okay, thank you, Peter. Okay, and there is a reminder that on uh, next Monday, the 27th, at What's that building called? Commu the uh, community town Hall Community Center. Center. Or the Town of New Falls Community Center. At 7 o'clock, there will be a uh, continuation of our public hearing for the <coughs> subdivision on Huguenot Street, the Jewett subdivision. That's July 27th at 7 o'clock, Town Hall, Town Community Center. <coughs> Uh, okay, so and the status just to back that up is no new information at this point. We're going to hear it and no new information. Did did you get a chance to speak with their attorney? No, but I need I will do that. I talked to Patty Brooks today and I, I will talk to Joe Moriello. Moriello. Uh, well not maybe tomorrow afternoon. Uh, this week. We'll work that out. Uh, some agreeable con uh, notation. Notation had to do with the conservation easements and so on. I want to make sure that's clear. Thanks, George. Um, one other thing I'd like to add to the B3 subject is that I've asked George to be able to attend next Monday's meeting with that group in the hope that we can make significant progress on Thursday towards completing the three items A, B, and C, is it, or one, two, and three? Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's I, 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 And I'd like to go beyond that. I was hoping that we'd also be able to get into the permitted and prohibited uses, and perhaps special uses, but I'm, I'm going to try to get that done for, for that also. Maybe we can have some time discussing that at the meeting. Um, so the hope is that uh, we'll get far enough along <coughs> that uh, we can get George's input to what we've done so far, and he'll sit through it and help us uh, make good progress answering questions that we may have. That because time is a wasting, or I should say, time is passing. Tempest is fugitive, and we need to uh, we need to be done soon. So, twenty-six. That's that. It is Monday, the twenty-seventh. Uh, it is. At what time? Uh, one o'clock. One o'clock. Here. Do we draw? Do we draw your attention? Okay. Okay. So um, we're left with um, something that's not on here, which is oh, okay. there are two things on here now that I see it. So one is the draft minutes, and the other is the. Uh, the note that George sent around for the uh, 
proposed modifications to the site plan review standards to incorporate a more relevant set of requirements, uh, more relevant to residential uses uh, than what is in the current site plan, which now is completely based on commercial uses. And when the village added residential uses to site plan review for us, um, they didn't do anything with that, so we're doing that now. We're going we're gonna to look at, at this quickly. George can explain some of the items, and we'll uh, make What I'd like to do before this meeting is over is make a recommendation to the village board, who meets tomorrow night, that um, we would like this to be added to the code or something. So you want this, if we do get it done tonight, to go up to the village board for tomorrow's meeting? Yeah. Well, the first paragraph. Oh, no, I, I have, have one, one uh, question and or concern, which is that um, we did make, I, I think some of these changes that you've got in red were already made. That's what we're going to say, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, the first, just, just the first paragraph, that change right. was proposed. And I th think from the minutes that was, that so was taken up. The, the, you've so, got a five page document from Attorney Rodden. House and it's not dated, and I think it came across on um, the 16th. There's a the site plan standard, essentially a 50% standard that is at Village Board. It's a public hearing tomorrow evening. And it's the first public hearing, first reading? Um, I should know that. I have an agenda, okay. and I'll okay. pull that out right now. No, no, it's okay, it's irrelevant. But I, I just mean to say that we don't have to discuss this any further because we've already a approved the first part, this wording in the first paragraph. Right. Yeah. So we're up to uh, item A, application procedure for site plan review. Sorry, I, miss, I misspoke. So it's not up for hearing, and I'll just check on that. But I believe it has not yet been approved by the village board and it's in the process of being referred to county. It must be the status. Uh, and I'll look at the. Okay. Okay, fine, thanks. Um, well, for what it's worth, in the second page of the minutes of the meeting on uh, July 8th, which is now a ways back, the <clears throat> proposed local law to amend section 212.23 relating to site plan for review of one and two family houses. I thought that described this first paragraph change. It was up for public hearing. Trustee Rockwell moved to close the public hearing. It carried. And then uh, that was the end of the discussion of the public hearing. So I assume the public hearing is over but I didn't see any action on it. Yeah. It sticks in my mind that it was not completed, and that's why um, it wasn't completed. It wasn't, it wasn't just that it hadn't been sent to the state, and um, I'm sorry, I don't have that to Okay, so it's out there, hanging out there. So, but the point is, we, we don't have to deal with that this evening. So the, as you said, that first standard is currently. Okay, George, you can. So uh, basically, I was trying to add to this section a separate section for the elements of an application that are required for single or two-family homes. And uh, in the course of that, I couldn't resist trying to clean up a little bit uh, <laughs> some of the requirements for other applications. Uh, and so the. First of all, I have added in on the generally for applications a survey of the lot showing the boundaries of the lot, location of existing water course, et cetera, uh, clearly establishing that you get a lot survey so that we, we're working from something a little more accurate than a tax map. Uh, that's something to discuss. Uh, I took out. Uh, some excess verbiage 
in that first A section, try to streamline a little bit and collect it in other areas. Showing the size of proposed driveways and or streets, proposed building structures and use, that should be obvious. Uh, I added in parking and secure storage areas for bicycles, which has not been a part of the site plan to this date. Uh, and architectural drawings for all proposed buildings. Um, so that, that's a change in the, uh, oh, I did add also all the detail that should be on site plans that we don't require now, the name of the property owner, abutting lot, deed restrictions, tax section, map, and number, uh, applicable zoning district, use regulation and bulk regulations described by notation, location map, the scale, one inch equals 2,000, which is usually just a small square on the corner, uh, indicating relation to the lot to all around surrounding land uses. So that that's a general requirement that would tighten up some of the applications we get. And then using that as the base, the next section is, is shorter, a um, little bit less rigorous. This is for single and two-family homes. That's three, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, section, subsection three. New one-family, two-family dwellings for expansion. Uh, and we've already gotten clear in the first paragraph of putting expansion over 50% square footage. So anything less than that doesn't come in as a site plan. So the uh, application shall be prepared and signed by legally qualified individual or firm, such as a registered architect, professional engineer, and shall contain the following. I've kept in there registered architect or professional engineer. Uh, it's a such as, it could be maybe someone else, a landscape architect, for example, some professional, which which is a burden, but it is for single and two-family homes. They're going through construction. They're going to have to get building permit. They're going to have to surveys anyhow. It doesn't seem too burdensome to ask for an engineer's uh, drawing. Uh, but anyhow, that's that's something to talk about. I know some of the site plans for single-family homes don't come in as a fully engineered drawing. Uh, so then again, we repeat what I think is necessary for residential. A survey of the lot showing boundaries, etc. Uh, and the important environmental elements like water courses, water bodies, and outcrops. Location and size of each proposed building or structure, location and size of all proposed impervious areas. So I'm trying to scoop in here uh, all impervious areas. So first of all, you can determine coverage. And whether it's a driveway or a parking area, it doesn't really matter. If it's impervious, that's what you need to know. If it's, if it's pervious, it's not so critical. Now, you, could, you want to see pervious too, perhaps, but. Uh, I just want to make sure I heard what you said. Were you saying that that would be a standard to identify where the driveway is? Where the impervious surfaces are. Or really the impervious surface, right. not necessarily the driveway. Not or necessarily the gravel. Parking area. If it's just gravel, no. Uh, proposed landscaping, which is not now in the, in the rules, but that's an important thing. Location and design of proposed stormwater management facilities. Now this, it's only if they're proposed. Most people will not propose anything, but if something is proposed, that should be shown. Location of proposed sidewalks and walkways, if they are proposed. Location of proposed utilities. Uh, architectural drawings of the proposed buildings, including floor plans, elevations, and exterior materials. I think that's going to be available to them anyhow because they're doing a building permit. Um, so I don't think that's too burdensome. Location and identification of buildings or sites within 100 feet that are designated by any governmental agency as historic or landmark. It's a shorthand way of saying what is now in the law. For, I forget what it says. Uh, under the a lot of village uh, system, but. Uh, are some of the provisions of section? 920 Yeah, but I think it's, it's yeah, generally any governmental agency is designated as historical landmark, they should note that. And then the same general uh, provision about it. Do, do we want to, uh, can I ask on that standard? So yeah. if we, um, 
Should, should, should we call it a, a local landmark or, a, or another type and another type of historic resource? Because I wonder if people may be challenged by understanding the other readers of the definition of a historic resource. Um, they may, right. I was thinking of the National Register of Historic Sites uh, or the State Register or it could be a local designation. But anyway, so you were thinking locally landmarked state or national register. Right, which is people all the way. Designated, right? It would have to be officially designated. Designated, such, like, right. Not just eligible, but designated. I mean, eligible would be too hard to figure out. Right. And then finally, I, I added in the exceptions we talked about before. May I interrupt for one second? Yeah. What if it's in our historic district? Uh, if the Building or structure has not been designated that way, then I, I haven't required it. But you know, uh, the general information required is uh, includes the uh, applicable zoning district. Uh, it's not a zoning district, I guess, but uh, no, it is. Is it? Under the yeah, law. we have an yeah. H district, but it doesn't oh. it doesn't provide any provisions special for us. It simply means that houses within that district or buildings within that district um, for certain things would need to go to the start local historic commission. Right, right. What so, uh, if they want to paint their house, mm -hmm. um, if so they want to put adding in, an addition to that. Adding, we adding in addition relevant. would certainly require them to yeah. go. So in, in that case, do we want to include or in our historic district? Well, then what Michael's saying is that it's in the, the zoning district would be the H district. So that's going to come out of the plan. Well, what, what about if it, if it abuts? Is, does, does, does that matter? Oh, the next okay. property over? Uh, if it's in a different district, then okay. those rules don't apply. So I'm so. sorry, George. I, I missed what you said about that. Did it, uh, we don't have to specifically mention. Well, this doesn't. It's in this well, first of all, it, it's in the H district, that is the zoning district, and so that is now required to be put on the plan or, or okay. the map, the plan. But um, whether you want to say it's adjacent to anything adjacent to, we could add that in. I don't think we have to do that if it's not a requirement. I, I, I wouldn't. Have. Right. I mean, you can look at the map using that. I, I just wanted to make sure that what. So on, on the site plan, it will say that it's in the historic district, and that's, that's our obligation. Then you, that's your information to write from. OK. So. And who, who is it that refers these things to historic preservation? It should be the building director. Right. OK. And I've been helping keep them abreast of the okay. too. OK, sorry, George. So then the exceptions is, is actually the, the important escape hatch here that for minor site development plans, this assumes it's coming to you because it has to. It's an addition of some sort that's more than 50%. For minor site development plans or in any other appropriate circumstances, this could be commercial property too. As determined by the planning board, the planning board may waive the provision of any items of information listed in this section. So this does give you the ability when they come in either pre-application or even the first application and you're looking at it and you want to do a completeness determination, maybe the building department told them they don't really have to fill this and this out, you could just weigh those things. You don't have to uh, do every single thing every time. Right. So if we didn't fill any elevations or something like that, that's fucking Well, it's up to you. Right. If it's not helping. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't put topography in. I, I put out crops. Oh, okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, it didn't seem to me that in the village, generally requiring topography made much sense uh, for, for all applications in the village. You can, you, you can ask for more in this and there, too. Uh, I didn't take that out. In the case of a use conversion, which does not require additional construction or site modification, this could be. Um, commercial use, or in the case of a minor change in existing conditions requiring a building permit, building department may determine that the site plan procedures outlined in this section are not applicable and may be waived. 
this determination shall be made by the planning board after receipt of a recommendation from the zoning administrator. That might be the long term. Yeah. What is your proper title, Dave? Village planner. Village planner. Mm -hmm. um, so it would it be the planner and not the, uh, well, the code enforcement? Uh, well, I was thinking of Dave, but I don't know what the title is. It, is there a code enforcement officer? Yeah, yeah. it's just the building inspector. Oh, but it's the same thing, it's the building inspector. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. one of the same. Well, it could be either. Um, so so this is the wrong word. We have to specify something different there. Yeah. It has to be the name of somebody here, or not the name, but the title, the title of somebody here. And finally, the request of the planning board, any other pertinent information may be reasonably required as necessary. So this is giving you the authority to relieve somebody of extra burden or to well, add in some additional requirements. So if we don't like them, we could just add <laughs> them. more burden. Well, okay, so that, that is that's the way to make this work flexibly for get the right answer for the right number. Okay. So can can you suggest a good change in wording for that last section where it mentions zoning administrator what titles we should use? Uh, so is code enforcement officer mm -hmm. the proper term for the, the village? The title is SEO building inspector. Building inspector and code enforcement officer. No. The code enforcement officer is just somebody who can Oh, you're thinking of building code enforcement or zoning code enforcement? I'm thinking under in terms of civil service definition. Oh, no. I'm thinking in terms of how our zoning law is written. And I actually I think we go generally to refer to it as the building inspector. I think it's the common term that we use but to check. Uh, Brian, why don't we have this conversation about like, the different titles and the different titles Okay, this is 212 5B26. The building inspector of the village or his or her designee. Any reference to the building inspector in this chapter shall be gender neutral, okay. Uh, and shall also be deemed to include and refer to the director of code enforcement or a code enforcement officer, if any. If no one should hold or there shall not have been established the position of director of code enforcement or code enforcement officer, then the building inspector shall be deemed to be authorized to act in such capacity. Now that's capacity as a building inspector, it's not zoning. So you were asking for zoning what, zoning officer? Well, we don't actually, well, the, the uh, site plan requirement is in 212.23, and that refers to the building inspector, that the application goes to the building inspector and is referred to the planning board by the building inspector. That's yeah, that's what we. Two twelve twenty three B. So, to be consistent, I guess the term should be building inspector. And then recommendation on waivers then would come from the building inspector to the planning board mm -hmm. as you send the application forward. Does that make sense? Just referring to the building inspector should suffice, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, that's consistent with the way the code is now. So I'm just trying to not create a new term. So this is not a change. Plan or, or planning staff or planning agency involved, but I know you, you've got sort of this link that you're making, as you said, that. Uh, yeah, if, since the building inspector is referring the application to the planning board, piece, that's the officer who should be making this recommendation. I should have seen that. Um, so that's in that section B. The last page. Do you see another one in there? No. 
I thought there would be code enforcement officers somewhere, but that, that may be elsewhere and it's not relevant yeah, yet. We have, uh, this is the code okay. I can make that change in the morning and send it back to you. Okay, well, it would be good. <clears throat> I would love to be able to give this to the clerk tonight. I don't know if the Tim Cook, can we add this to the village board agenda tomorrow to review this? Is that too uh, crazy? It's too crazy. Yeah, we have a pretty big agenda. Yeah, okay. We probably want to be able to read it. Okay, so. Okay, so <coughs> we can do it right. Okay, so we can move to. One dollar. Do you want driveways called out on uh, the standard for the, the new standard essentially for the residential category? Well, they're required to be on the survey. Driveways are required to be on the survey? Thank yeah. You. So item A in both part two and three says a survey and among the items it includes driveways. I missed it there, my bad. Yeah, I was thinking survey. <coughs> Yeah, they'll, they'll be on the site then with the survey because won't be the drivers there when the survey. They'll be on the engineered site plan. So those would be exist right. So those that's a, any existing All driveways. Existing ones, okay. Right. So if you're proposing a new one, um, right, then that would necessarily be there from the survey. So proposed driveways and parking area or no? Well, we care about pervious, right? Well, I asked the opinion for. Uh, <clears throat> so, I like the more generic term of using impervious surfaces or impervious areas and... It's more inclusive. Uh, it is more inclusive, yes. It's broader so that it would include anything that's... Because that's part of our concern. Um, and your argument is if a driveway is gravel, then it's not necessarily impervious. For a house. So right. it's a single family, two, two family homes. Gravel driveway isn't this Oh, that's maybe that's what it is. I guess there could be something underneath it. That's right. Yeah. I, suppose. I mean, I, to me, it, you would care about this if there's going to be a stormwater issue running water into the street or running water onto somebody else's property, but or maybe a coverage issue. But if somebody's putting a gravel parking area by their home, I don't know why the why the board should be concerned. Is what I'm saying. It's just, yeah. It seems a minor issue. So I'm not, and just so I'm clear, I'm not asking for there be a standard if you're putting a driveway, a minor driveway, as you said, but so are you also, is, I would just want to ask the board when you do get, for example, a new addition or a new residence on a lot, do you want to see the proposed circulation and parking on the site within that minor, if I'm to classify it, residential site? Yeah, I would say yes. Okay. I would say yes for that. So proposed, it could go in there as. Uh, you could put under F if you want. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. Proposed uh, driveways, sidewalks, and walkways. Yeah. Under F, under three F, proposed driveways. Uh, proposed driveway parking areas. Yeah. Parking areas, sidewalks, and walkways. That's better. Anybody have any questions or comments about this document? I like this very much. I like it. John? Yeah. yeah. So, can we have a motion that? Um, to approve the document to be forwarded to the village board after changes. George's changes are applied. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Ryan, I'll send it to you tomorrow morning. Or if not in the morning, the afternoon. Okay. Bryant, um, I'd like to uh, take the opportunity to welcome you to. Uh, to us and the village and the building department. Um, 
you've, you've had contact with some of us before. Rich Steffens, Michael Zerler, George Ordenaz is our attorney, John Litton is a member, Liz is not here, and you know Ryan. Um, so you came here for, now your, your civil service title says Building Inspector 2, right? Yeah, MCO. And MCO. Uh, municipal. municipal Code Officer, Building Inspector 2. Right. And um, in effect, you are supervising other building inspectors, building inspector ones that are here already, right? And Rush yeah. and officers. Yes, right. So it's good. And uh, so you came here from, you were at Wappinger's recently? Town of Warsing. Well, Warsing, right, all right. Not far from, OK. Yeah, it is. And, and you're also at, uh, I should let you tell, but I'm going to see if my memory will work here. So let's see, Town of Catskill? Work for the Town of Catskill. Town, town of Rosendale? Yes. And there's another one where you were going for? Marbleton. Marbleton. That was a long time ago, right? That was a long time ago, I see. Yeah, 2007. So we're happy to have you here. Welcome aboard. You're welcome to any meeting anytime you want to come. Just don't throw things at us, please. Cause Tim doesn't like that, I guess. Okay. So, any other. Uh, You've got stuff? minutes to approve? Oh, yes, thank you very much. Very good point. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So, are, do these minutes include your changes? No. No. Okay. I will tell you what my changes are. Because so I'm looking, I got all of this late, and so I was. Okay. Just I can tell you that um, at the very top of the second page, as I have it, it says, Mr. Litton move to extend, I change that to continue the public hearing. Okay. And um, I changed the text in the resolution because we made a change to that in the, in the motion to uh, approve this resolution. And the change was, we changed it from an undated sketch and I changed it to a sketch plan dated May 27, 2015. Right. Um, and uh, let's see what else did I do here. Okay, on the last paragraph of the pre application for the steward shop, which is on the last page, it's the fourth paragraph on the last page. Um, uh, there, what was there was incoherent to me. I changed it to Chairman Whiteman stated that with proper notice, the entire planning board is able and invited to join the quote B3 committee, unquote. Yeah, I wasn't sure what that meant. And then I changed the, um, in the in one paragraph down where it says Planner Gilmore would ask Consultant White to perform, not preform. And that's, I uh, didn't, uh, anyhow. Those are my changes. So, may I have a motion to approve? No, no, no. So I have okay, couple, you have more too. I have a couple questions and possible changes. Yes. Um, on the first page, yes. uh, three paragraphs up from the bottom, it says, Ms. Brooks explained why the conservation easement is not explicitly noted on the final plat since it is not fully designed yet. I think that should be trail easement. Okay, wait a minute, you said it's on the first page? First page, three First paragraphs page. from the bottom. Two paragraphs. From three. The bottom. Three paragraphs. paragraphs. I see Mr. Zerler uh, moved to open. Maybe it's paginated different. Okay. Oh, sorry. So let's explain why the conservation easement is not explicitly noted on the final plan. I'm pretty sure Since that should be not, trail easement. Yeah, yes, right. it should. Because yeah. that was the item that won't get designed until uh, some months from now. Um, and then in the next paragraph, um, it says Mr. Rodenhausen requested sections 10 and 14 be reworded, fine. He also requested the existing conservation easements be shown on the final plat. I don't think that's, I don't yeah. think you asked for the entire conservation no. easement to be on the plat. So I'm not sure what that's referring to.
but I, mean, I don't require that. I don't recall making that request. No, I'm sure the, you the request I made was that sections 10 and 14 be reworded. That's what we're working on. That's a right. that's a 23 page document. I don't think that would be on the plat. So I would suggest just striking that whole sentence. Mm -hmm. there, which sentence? The he or the he, he also he also requested that the existing conservation easements be shown on the final plat. And I'm just making a note for your clerk to help steward this. We've got a joint public hearing coming up with the yep. um, town board and presumably the clerks of the town and the village have coordinated their minutes on this joint meeting. So if Ryan can just communicate with the town how we've revised our minutes. Yeah, I mean, if they want to correct that. Well, they might not have received this. I yeah. Who, who has went I have a feeling that there's been coordination to get this done. Okay. Um, under PB 1512, the pre-application for the new project to construct a steward shop. Yeah. There's a, two comments referring to me. The first one, just grammatical, um, Mr. Zeller stated that while the current zoning code, uh, just strike the word while since otherwise it's not a sentence. Right. Um, well, it's a sentence. It's not a trying to catch up with you. It's actually not a whole, <laughs> it's part of sentence. Um, Did you say that again, Mike? The PB 1512, third PB paragraph, including the heading, says Mr. Zero has stated that, and strike the word we while. We took the word while out of that. Um, I am making notes on here. I'm marking my document. I'm going to send it to everybody. Um, in the discussion of the three month moratorium, Again, there's a reference to something I said about notifying business owners. Um, I'm pretty certain that what I said was notifying business owners within that affected district, not all business owners. So if we could just in insert a phrase. So Mr. Owners in the district. Mr. Zillow suggested noticing the business owners within the district about the moratorium. And that's all I have, thanks. Okay. Yes. Can you and I think you uh, made that change on the from undated to the date May of uh, Rich Stephens' resolution, yes. wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. So that same change was made in the resolution. Yes, it was. It, it was. It was made in the minutes. It was made up here. It was made in the resolution down here. So, un undated sketch appears twice. That's what I'm saying. So. Right. This. If you oh, made I'm the sorry. change up here. Okay. I only made it in one the place change down here. I think. I know we went over that at the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. Okay, so this is. Okay, sketch plan, dated May. Okay, so this would be in the bottom there. here. There it says undated. Yes. Okay. We good? Any further no, comments? Um, we have a motion to accept the minutes as amended. So moved. John, thank you. Second. I can't because I was. Oh, you were. Uh, uh, second. Thank you, Mike. All in right. favor? Right. 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 Something to myself. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Right. Thank you. So there are three ayes and one abstain, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so I think we're done. Thank you. Thanks. You want to make the ever popular? I would like to move that we adjourn. Second. Or to go to work. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Can I ask a quick question? Is the town exempt from our new B3 regulations? Oh, the town? We're going to rebuild the town. No, they're not exempt. They're, they're not exempt? We'll make this thing oh, right. we, no, but we have, before you came, some of the earlier meetings.